Lord, this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We just praise God. We just give him a little praise this morning. Hallelujah, because God is good and the devil is a liar. Praise the Lord. Well, this morning, praise God. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you. Hallelujah. And just encourage you that we have gone through some seasons and we have gone through some times. Praise the Lord. And we have went through some battles. Praise God. And it, it has made us tired. Hallelujah. Some of us has gotten weary. But I say that now is the time. Hallelujah. That I believe God is going to give us a season of rest. And I don't know if I said this last week, but I felt like some burdens had been lifted. Hallelujah. In the spirit. And as those, as those burdens have been lifted, I believe God has taken us, hallelujah, into another season of blessings in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we just bless his holy name because God is good. I believe the Lord has something, hallelujah, that he wants me to say. Praise God. And we're going we're gonna to get it out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. But I want to go to Psalms 37, verse 7 this morning. Hallelujah. And I know this is a true word from God. In verse, uh, chapter 37, verse 7, it says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who bring wicked schemes to pass. But the scripture tells us to rest in the Lord and to wait patiently on him. And that's what I want us to do today. I know that we have been through some horrific things the last few months, praise God, but we made it through. Hallelujah. Maybe sometimes, you know, um, people say, well, you don't know what I've been through. You don't see all the, the challenges and the obstacles that I've had to go through, but you're still here. And I come to tell you this morning that God said, hallelujah, it's coming a season of rest. And in that rest is going to be peace. And in that peace is going to be prosperity. But what we have to do, God wants us to trust him. See, when we rest in the Lord, this is something we always say, hallelujah, always we tell you, well, rest in the Lord. What we're trying to say is give it to the Lord. Trust the Lord with it. When the psalmist says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him, he's not talking about, per se, the physical rest that involves breaking from activity, uh, sleeping and stopping, that, those kind of things. But what he wants us to do is to gather strength, hallelujah, to continue in God. Rest in the Lord refers to a spiritual rest from confusion. From, he don't want you worrying. He don't want you stressing out. See, sometimes I, I keep saying this. We try to do things within our humanly, our human nature, and we can't do it. And what we have to do, uh, we have to really rely upon, hallelujah, God to take these situations. We have to really trust him. And God, sometimes he wants to give us a break from the internal, from the external, from the moral and the spiritual enemies. God don't, we don't, we shouldn't have to have warfare 24 seven. Somebody said my warfare has ended today in Jesus name, because I'm going into my season of rest. The Hebrew word translated as rest means to be at peace, to be still to be quiet and to be calm. And yes, I'm gonna pick on Sister Daphne because we went through this, hallelujah, the last uh, couple of months or so. And the Lord kept telling her, hallelujah, to be still, to be, a, to be calm, to be at peace because there was nothing humanly possible that she could do in her situation. So what God was saying, you, you just praise me. You just worship me. Hallelujah. You just thank me for the outcome. Hallelujah. And so you just rest in that peace. You just be still. You quiet yourself. Praise God. 
hallelujah, and just rest in the Lord because, see, the Lord is doing the work. The Lord is going to move in your situation. The Lord is going to move on your behalf. So this is what the Lord is saying this morning, hallelujah, that we have to learn how to be still before the Lord. We have to learn how to be silent. Some translations, some other translations of this say, be silent before the Lord. Surrender to the Lord. You have to surrender that situation. You have to surrender the problem to the Lord. You have to give it to him. If you don't give everything to God and you try to do it yourself, nothing will ever work out for you. But what the, hallelujah, what God really wanted to know, what's really essential here is the idea that to rest and to be at peace, one must dwell in the presence of God and surrender, hallelujah, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have to know, praise God, we can do nothing. And I said this last Thursday, but we, it's vital that we pray, that we take everything to God in prayer. See, in the Old Testament, God promised the people of Israel a life of peace. See, this is a promise that God will give you rest. God didn't mean for you to stay in warfare 24-7. He never meant for you to be trying to rebuke the devil all day long. But God gives us seasons of rest. He gives us, hallelujah, where we have that peace that surpasses all understanding. He gives us that time, praise God, that we're going to have, hallelujah, that surplus, that reserve, praise God, that we can flow, hallelujah, and God can give us rest. It doesn't mean that we cease from our activities, but this just means that we're keeping covenant, hallelujah, with God in Jesus' name. So praise God. I thank God, hallelujah, for his word. In Exodus chapter 33 and verse 14, it says, and he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. See, God promised us. If you know what I tell people, when you feel the Holy Spirit come upon you, when you feel, hallelujah, that warm presence, when you feel the, the goosebumps and everything, hallelujah, that's the time that you just worship and praise God for doing the work in your life, in your situation. Just begin to thank him for all those things, hallelujah, that you have on the table because when you're in his presence, oh my God, that's when the, the, the enemy cannot uh, penetrate that atmosphere. That's that time that you and God can have. Even uh, Joshua, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 13 through 15, uh, it says, Remember the words of Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is providing you a place of rest and will give you this land. See, he, God always, when he promised his servant something, this morning, as he's saying to you, I'm getting ready to give you a season of rest and peace and prosperity, you should be rejoicing. You should be praising God, hallelujah, because this is something that you're in covenant with God for, and, he, and he's promised this to you. So why not receive it? Hallelujah, that problem that you could not fix. That thing, hallelujah, that you have been worrying and stressing over. Why not this morning give it to God, put it on the altar, and let the Lord work it out. You can't change anybody. You can't do anything. All you can do, hallelujah, is give it to God and let God, God let me say this, God is the one, hallelujah, that has to enlighten man's heart. Hallelujah, to change him. We cannot change anyone. We can plant a seed, praise God. Uh, God will send somebody else to water, praise the Lord. Ha and then, hallelujah, then the Holy Spirit will come in and do the work. So what we have to do, we have to just do our part, take our hands off, and rest in the Lord and trust him that it is done. This restful, peaceful living dependent on the Israelites remaining faithful and obedient to God alone by keeping their covenant with him. So you got to be faithful. You have to be obedient, praise God. You can't keep jumping in and out of covenant with somebody. Praise God. That's why marriage is a commitment. When, you, when you're married to somebody and you enter into that covenant with them, that, meant, that means through the good times, through the bad times, praise God. But now in these relationships, nobody want to 
put God in, in the forefront of the marriage, praise the Lord, so that God can come in and fix the relationship. Don't get yoked up with somebody, praise the Lord, that you can't go to that person and you all sit down and pray, hallelujah, and ask God, say, Lord, hallelujah, how do we change Hallelujah, how can you help us to change so that this union, this marriage can be blessed? Praise the Lord. I know that's for somebody, even in any relationship. Don't get yoked up with somebody that you can't pray with, that you can't read the word with, that you can't worship with. Praise the Lord. But God wants us to have, hallelujah, this rest. He wants us to have this peace. To those whose hearts stray from God, God say that uh, they would never enjoy this rest. You know, God always gives us the word. He gives us good instructions. We know, and this is what I share with people all the time. You cannot just take the scriptures that you want to use, but you have to take all of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You have to take that whole word. So God says, yes. Say, if you stray from my covenant, if you're not disobedient, praise God, there are still things in Psalms 95. In Psalms chapter 95, verse 7, it says, For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as Meribah, as on the day of Manasseh in the wilderness, when your fathers put me to the test. See, God will always, hallelujah, you got to always pass your test. Praise God. You got to always. No, but what he said, he said, for the 40 years I loathed the generation and said, they are a people who go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Therefore, I swore in my wrath, they should not enter my rest. See, if you're being disobedient, and this is why I tell, tell share with you all the time, you know, we want to keep our hearts and minds right with God. That's why we always repent in God if there's something that I've done, something that I said, even my known and unknown sin, Father God, forgive me. Show me if in an area if I am erring. Lord God, if I'm, if I'm not flowing correctly in an area, you want to always make sure that you are right with the Father because you want to be obedient. You want to be faithful to God. It, you know, and eventually because of the widespread disobedience and unfaithfulness, the nation of Israel was taken into captivity in Babylon. Let me tell you something. When you have bad behaviors, you're going to keep going through the same test because I know God is always trying to show us ourselves. He's always trying to help us be better because we were made in his image. But a lot of times, praise God, I don't know why I'm going here this morning, but a lot of times, Praise God. We don't want to change. And, you know, we have to be able to allow the word to change us. In Romans, it says that the word of God washes our mind. If the word of God is washing us and cleansing us and making us whole and show us how not to be disobedient and showing us how we can be faithful to God. But sometimes we get into things and then all of a sudden we say, well, why have not the answer came? Why this or why that? But you got to always look in your heart, praise God. Hallelujah, because God wants an obedient people. He wants you to be faithful to him because he has promised never to leave us or forsake him. So why would we want to leave God? Why would we want to leave our loving heavenly father? So after the Israelite, they was taken into cap captivity after returning from exile. And once again, the promise of the rest in the Lord's presence uh, was present. So do not be afraid, Jacob. And he said, my servant, do not be dismayed for Israel, but I will bring you home again. See, when you repent and get right, what he was telling Jacob, he said, now I'm going to bring you home. Hallelujah, I'm going to make this right because you done repented and you got it right. And your children will return from exile and Israel will return to a life of peace and quiet and no one will terrorize them. See, God know how to make your enemies be at peace with you. He know how to give you a time of rest. He know how to give you a time of refreshing, a time of revival, hallelujah, for your spirit and for your soul. Hallelujah. This is why he was uh, uh, telling Jacob this. He said, now I'm going to bring you back home because they, they prayed, they repented, they got it right. 
before God. That's what it tells us in Jeremiah chapter 30. And then, but see again, hallelujah, and this is how we do as people again, but again, the people failed to learn that resting in the Lord meant surrendering wholly to the Lord and righteous living. Praise God. This is always my thing, praise God. I always say this, hallelujah, and I hope every one of us always do this in our own personal lives, praise God. We want to always make sure that we're living everything and being a good example, praise the Lord. We want to not only speak the word, preach the word, minister the word, but we want to be that walking, living, hallelujah, example, hallelujah, of the word, just like Jesus was, praise the Lord. So we want to live righteously. So many times, so many of us, you, you know, and I even check my own motives, praise the Lord. I don't know why I'm going like this way this morning, but praise the God. I pray that it's being a blessing to somebody because God wants to give us rest. He want to give us that peace. He want to give us that prosperity, but we got to keep our hearts right. We got to keep our motives right. And this is all he was trying to teach the Israelites. He, he wanted them to learn, hallelujah, that the that the uh, fruit of that righteousness, hallelujah, if they flow in righteousness, if they uh, flow in obedience to God, that this would be, hallelujah, their, their product, the fruit of their labor would be the peace. It would, it would be them living righteously before the Lord and hallelujah and everything. And they, and they could flow in this quietness and in this confidence in their God forever. In the New Testament, the book of Hebrews declares that the good news that those who believe in Jesus Christ can enter his rest. And God promise of entering his rest still stands. So that we ought to tremble with fear with some, some of you might fail to experience it. But this good news that God prepared, hallelujah, this rest has been announced to us just as it had been to them. But it did them no good because they did not share the faith of those who listen to God. You got to hear the word of God. You got to listen to it. Hallelujah. For only we who believe can enter his rest. And see, you know what? When you leave this world, praise God, you want to enter into that rest. But while you're yet here on this earth, God has promised you peace and rest too. This is the thing. I just want us to know, praise God, that as believers, we are not granted immunity from life storms, but we have a choice on how we react to those storms of life. Our natural tendency might to be to run away frantically, looking for help, trying to save ourselves from trouble. And I keep saying, we keep saying this, we can't save ourselves. We have to look to the sovereign God of heaven. We can either respond frantically, arrest in the Lord's pr uh, presence, or we can either waste our time worrying and not trusting in the Lord to take care of us. Jesus said, come unto me, hallelujah, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke. See, when you take his yoke, when you, that meaning when you take the word, when you take prayer, when you take meditation, when you take all the tools, hallelujah, he said, learn, hallelujah, let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. So when he teach you who he is, hallelujah, then you can be at rest, then you can be at peace, hallelujah, with the Lord. I thank God. I want to tell this is I want to talk a little bit about David right here because I love the story of David and Goliath in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I love how David, praise God, David was always in battles. He was always uh, trying to uh, uh, you know, he when he went into battle, he always prayed. He always depended on God. And I remember when all of the Israelites, they was running because, you know, they was afraid of Goliath and uh, David, hallelujah, in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, uh, David told him, he said, no, he said he, that he would go, he would fight Goliath, praise God, because he offended God. And David had just that much strength, just that much intense faith and trust in God that God was with him. David said he deleted the bear. He deleted, I mean, he, he defeated the uh, bear. He defeated the lion. And he had confidence in God, in God's strength, and that he didn't even take Saul's armor with him. But he took his own 
uh, sack with his five stones in it. What am I saying to you today? That David knew how to rest in the Lord. He knew how to give his bowels over to God. He knew that when God fought his battle, then he would win every time. And this is what I want you to know this morning. I want you to give that problem over to God. I want you to give Hundadio Shata. I want you to give every situation to, to the Father that you cannot fix. Praise God. Because he wants to fix it. He wants to bring you into a place of peace. He want to bring you into a place of prosperity. He want to bring you into that place of calmness and quietness. See, the writer of Hebrew also tells us that there is a future, a final uh, rest for those in heaven. And in the meantime, we can rest in the Lord by taking everything, all our burdens, all our problems, all of our anxieties to him in prayer. We can tell God that we need Hallelujah, even just to remember and thank him for all that he has done. And that's what David did, praise God. When he, when he went out there, he, he, he wasn't worried. He was not anxious. He went out there, he knew. He said, I know that my God, that God was going to take Goliath out. And that's how we have to be about our situations. What do you believe in God for this morning? What problem is it that you need for him to fix? That you cannot rest in the Lord. Hallelujah, that you cannot have faith in his word, that he's already fixed it for you, that, you're, that, you're, that you need to enter into your season of rest on earth, hallelujah, so that you can flow. There are some other things, hallelujah, that God want to take you up another level to. There are some things, hallelujah, there's, a, there's time now to mature into some other things. God is calling us, hallelujah, to something more. But now we got to have that season of rest, that season, hallelujah, where we can now come into a place that we have the means, hallelujah, and that we have the wisdom and the knowledge of heaven that we can flow, hallelujah, in a different way. Praise God. So we want to just, hallelujah, take everything to him in prayer. We can tell God, hallelujah, and, and bring back to his remembrance how he's always delivered us. As we do this, we are able to abide in Jesus Christ and in God's presence. He promises to pour us, to pour into us a supernatural, incomprehensible peace to guard our hearts and minds. Right here and now, we can quiet ourselves and be still and surrender ourselves to the Lord. We can see him as Isaiah did. He said, he, he said in Isaiah 6 and uh, 1, he, he said, Lord, he said, in the year of King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting up on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. See, I believe it's time that, hallelujah, we need to see more of God's glory. Hallelujah, you need to see more of his glory in your life, hallelujah. See, you need to start looking up, praise God, and you need to say, and you need to say Lord, I see you, Father God. In your presence, I'm going to remain, hallelujah. I'm going to be calm. I'm going to have that incomprehensible peace in my life because I know I'm in covenant. I know I'm not being disobedient, that I'm, I'm living a holy life unto you. Praise the Lord. See, he is sovereign over the whole earth. He's sovereign over our lives and over every enemy, both internal and external the human and the uh, spiritual. We can wait patiently. We can peacefully wait for him. We can be steadfast, praise God. See this morning, hallelujah, I went to in Isaiah 46 and nine. It says that we can uh, remember the former things of old for I am God. There is no other, I am God. And there is none like me. See, there's nobody like the God we serve. He can do anything, anytime, when he get ready, because he understands, praise God. He understands the supernatural. He understands the will in the middle of the will. He understands, hallelujah, when the eagle was flying in one direction and everything was going in unison, praise God. 
Hallelujah. See, in the prophetic, everything has a flow and it flows in unison. And God knows, hallelujah, when he's putting things together in the north, the south, the east and the west, and there's a coming together. I was thinking about some of the supernatural things that the Lord has shown me. I don't know if I was pastor and I was discuss, talking about this, but there are so many supernatural things that God does, praise God. And this is why we try to show you there is always divine intervention. And we don't have to do anything except just be. Sometimes all we have to do is just, just be a good Christian. Just be that good example. Just just be the word like Jesus was, praise God. Just, just be good, just love like he did, praise the Lord. And, and, and in the rest of Isaiah 46, it says, I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will accomplish all my purpose. See, this is the thing. See, from the beginning to the end, God knows what to do. Praise God. And all we have to do is trust him. But do you really trust him? Do you really trust God? hallelujah, to bring everything to pass in your life. See, we can peacefully wait for him. We can be steadfast, longing, and always looking to him for help. And he will show up every time. All we need to do is rest in that trust, rest in knowing, hallelujah, who God is in your life. It is because of him that you're taking your next breath. It is because of him, praise God, that you can rise up in the morning time. It is him that brings you those still in those moments when you hear that still small voice inside of you. That is God speaking to you. This morning, I, I, I just feel like God is saying to us, praise the Lord, that this is a time that we're supposed to go into a, a season of rest. This is a time the Lord is going to give us instructions. This is a time that he's going to give us direction. But we have to be in a place where we can hear him. We have to be in a place where we are refreshed and not being worried and anxious for nothing. The Bible tells us, but, but everything by prayer and supplications. So this morning, I want you to rely on, rest, on resting in the Lord. Wait on him. Trust him. Be like David. Be intentional. Hallelujah. Them, I, I mean, the Take out your stones, praise God, and let God, hallelujah, guide your hand. Let him uh, be the one taking care of the enemy. You just make sure that you're in position, praise God, that you're in the place that you're supposed to be. And God will always, always, hallelujah, be there and work things out on your, on your behalf for your good. Listen, I've seen God do some things, hallelujah. I've seen him do some miracles. I've seen him turn things around, hallelujah, that seem like what, impossible. That, but that's what God tells us. What's impossible for man, hallelujah, is possible for God. So this morning, I want you to stop worrying. I want you to stop being anxious for nothing. But I want you to rest in the Lord, knowing that, hallelujah, it's already done, that it's already came to pass. All you have to do is trust and have faith in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Pastor William.